Ladies and gentlemen from the World Wide Web and dear visitors of Passion for Trucks, welcome to this uh, fantastic roundtable. Today we'll talk about all the forms of alternative energies and we'll start, we'll kickstart even with a, a fascinating one called hydrogen. We've gathered a fantastic panel of, uh, of experts on that topic. I will um, introduce themselves first. This is what I'll call my 10 second pitch. So make a long story short. Bert, you've got 10 seconds. Who are you? Thank you, Claude. Uh, my name is uh, Bert van der Gavey. I'm the founder and CEO of TaylorMade Logistics in uh, Belgium uh, is the headquarter, but we are active in uh, eight countries in Europe. Frederic? Yes, I'm Frederic, uh, working for Vamoo Logistics as a business development manager. Um, yeah, present in Belgium, Romania and uh, Germany and uh, happy to be here. Frank, you're our sponsor today. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> So my name is uh, Frank Schnitzler. I work with uh, Air Products, and Air Products is the largest hydrogen producer in the world. Uh, and we are active in hydrogen already for 60 years. And almost, let's say, hydrogen as such has 25% of our business. And uh, we, I'm working actually with customers and with municipalities to get hydrogen into trucks on the road. Great. And finally, Chris. Uh, I'm Christopher. I work with uh, Waterstofnet, and uh, I'm the project manager of Hydrox. The project with the ambition to decarbonize heavy duty traffic and transport in Europe. Something we'll talk about later. Well, I'll first start with a short introduction because uh, I could then let do the talking and it would, could last for hours because I know how passionate you are about hydrogen. Let's say two years ago, I, I didn't really know that hydrogen would be a big part of the energy mix of the future. In two years' time, a lot of things have changed, and now that it is obvious that we need hydrogen to decarbonize road transport completely because, first, a truck is not a car, and two, there is no one-size-fits-all solution to decarbonize heavy goods transport. Uh, but maybe the guys who are the best place to answer the first question, to say why they believe in, in hydrogen, are the two transport companies. So I will start with you, Bert. Why do you personally believe that hydrogen is part of your solution? Yeah. Well, it, it's, it's, uh, it's something that grows, it's not, uh, uh, it, it's still in development. Um, Elon Musk said that uh, hydrogen is complete nonsense. And that is true for cars, I think, uh, but um, it's not true for trucks. Uh, as you mentioned, trucks is another diff uh, thing. And, and there's not, uh, at this moment, there's no other solutions than hydrogen. Yeah? There's also some disadvantages to hydrogen, but there's no other solution. It's the only solution for long distance trucks or trucking in, in general, yeah. Very briefly, have you already taken steps in that direction? We, we've been working with sustainability for many, many years. It's one of our core, uh, it's our DNA at uh, TaylorMade Logistics. Uh, we have a lot of uh, projects in that direction at the moment. There's still small steps, but we all are in the prototype development of, of uh, hydrogen trucks. Um, our goal is already next year to be more in, um, in, an, in the next stage uh, of more operational phase. Um, Everybody is talking about 2025 as, as really the moment when the big steps will be taken. Mm -hmm. uh, all the uh, constructors of, of uh, trucks, they're all developing this hydrogen truck and, and it will be in the, on the market or in the market in 2025. But you're already but we, anticipating on that. We deadline. need to anticipate, but because it's a learning process, we need to learn. Uh, if we are going to wait 2025, then it will be 2030 before we actually get somewhere. Yeah? So we need to start now. We need uh, fueling stations. We need uh, the experience to maintain these trucks. We need to know what, how we have to plan them because the planning will be different. Yeah? Uh, what can we do? Where can we earn the money? Um, yeah. There are a lot of topics to be a dealt with. Topics, Frederic, yeah. I think you have already, already have a, a, a small experience with hydrogen. What, what have you already done and how far are you? Um, indeed, it was 2017, 2018 when, he, when we had our first conversation with uh, CMB Tech. Uh, CMB Tech, um, yeah, okay, they create applications with hydrogen and one of their first projects was um, yeah, the dual fuel truck. Um, they came to Vamour, we, came, we went to them um, and it was 2018 when we started our conversations. At that moment, 
uh, we still invested in LNG trucks, but the technology wasn't there yet. Um, but okay, then 2021, and the project became more concrete. Um, we started with our first dual fuel truck beginning of uh, 2022, or by the end of 2021, and it's now the first uh, truck running on dual fuel, so diesel and hydrogen, so a kind of um, the hybrid model. Um, it's running day-to-day -day operations uh, since the beginning of uh, January. And the first feedback is? First fe feedback is uh, magnificent in, in general. Um, we started with the truck for the laser uh, because uh, we are the, um, the transport company um, offering the distribution services for the laser. Um, first uh, project, first trial was three months for the laser. Um, we did the shuttles coming from their DC in Zelik in uh, Brussels region up to Antwerp so we could refuel at the H2 um, station in Antwerp. Um, those three months were already um, remarkable numbers. We had a diesel displacement of around 30%, um, 30, 35% in general. And after those three months, another customer, um, Ivonik, um, they approached us uh, because they were also interested in the dual fuel technology. And we are their logistic service provider within Antwerp Port. Um, so we started with our shuttles in between the plant and our warehouse and with a container uh, haulage within Antwerp Port. Um, not so, I mean, the distance was less than with uh, the LASA uh, for every um, transport. But okay, numbers were also 25-30% of reduction. Um, so indeed, we started with distribution transport and the container haulage. And the aim is to go live uh, beginning of July with the international haulage as well as the uh, next trial. So it, it really keeps rolling. Frank, I, I think you've, you're meeting those two guys for the first time. This must yes. sound like music to your ears. It, it is, it is indeed, Claude. I mean, uh, what, what I'm hearing is, is it also in, in line with a market survey that we did at the uh, recent uh, Transport and Logistics Award, uh, where four out of the five respondents actually said that they believe that hydrogen will be uh, an important fuel for trucking uh, in the coming times. And what was also interesting to see is that, let's say, especially the younger people, had, let's say, a more positive attitude towards hydrogen. And uh, when I look at the responses we got from, from Hollius, like uh, what you were saying as well, uh, Bert and uh, Fredrik as well, um, that there, there was some reluctance with Hollius still. And that, has, that is basically due to being unfamiliar with hydrogen as a fuel. That's one. Uh, and the other point is, you know, where can you fuel? Where is the, uh, the, the, the infrastructure and the, the fueling stations actually fuel hydrogen? So that is something that we as our products are actually tackling. We have a partnership, for instance, with uh, Logiville, uh, where we have uh, um, innovations in the logistics sectors being displayed, including hydrogen fueling. We are working uh, with partners as well to set up uh, hydrogen fueling stations. So we're building currently fueling stations in the UK, in Crawley. We're building a fueling station in, uh, near Cologne, uh, and also recently announced that we were building one in Rotterdam. So those are, are things that we are trying to, let's say, uh, do to actually help hauliers to implement hydrogen. We're also developing uh, refueling options to convert fleets from, let's say, the first 10 to, to 20 truck fuelings per day, going up to 100 truck fuelings uh, on a fueling station on a daily basis. So that's also something that we are trying to do and, and also we are uh, implementing those uh, solutions. And if you look at overall uh, with the fueling stations that we have around the world, uh, and you can see that also on our stand uh, later on. You know, currently we are having something like one and a half million of safe refuelings uh, on an annual basis. So that really shows that there is progress, uh, but indeed it takes time to actually put it uh, into the market. So you're really becoming kind of end-to-end -end solution provider. Indeed, so basically what we are looking to do is to build, own and operate fueling stations and uh, have the hydrogen being produced, transport the hydrogen to the fueling station and operate the fueling station so that uh, people actually and hauliers actually can just fuel up and uh, pay a price per kilogram at the pump. Let's imagine that I am a medium-sized Belgian road transport operator. I have a nice fleet of trucks and I'm, I'm believing in, in, in hydrogen. H how will you help me uh, to start with a small fleet conversion that may grow in the future 
because you, that's not something you can do from zero to 100 in, in, in two years' time, I suppose. Yeah, that, that's correct. So the, for that, we have developed uh, special refueling solutions that can be put on, uh, let's say, on, on the side of the resistance company, for instance, where you can have your first trucks being fueled with hydrogen. And then whenever you then want to expand the fleet, uh, that fueling station can actually grow with the throughput and with the uh, amount of uh, hydrogen that you would actually need. So those are specific options that we can always, let's say, tailor to the needs of the, of the customer. Uh, and that helps indeed on the conversion from uh, diesel or from HVO to hydrogen. Now the next question may be directed to Chris or to you, Frank. Uh, who's the best expert on uh, colors? On colors? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we all know that at the current time, hydrogen is sometimes produced based on fossil fuels, which Correct. is not the yeah. real ideal future solution. Yeah. Uh, what about green hydrogen? Is, is, is this the only fuel for the future or are there other intermediary I, types of hydrogen that could be also interesting? Yeah, I, I think as, as uh, let's say, the largest hydrogen producer in the world, I, I, I take that question, Chris, if you don't mind. Um, so, so our products, uh, we, we continue to invest in hydrogen production uh, to uh, actually uh, produce more and more uh, of, this, uh, of this fuel. And Basically, we think you know, that the future is going to be green hydrogen. And it is all about, uh, let's say, generating a cleaner future. And for that, we really have to invest in uh, large-scale projects. Uh, and our products does have the, the skills and the competences to actually do these kind of large-scale projects, uh, where we have access to technology, to skills and competences on uh, large uh, project execution, we have a strong balance sheet because it, it takes money, of course, to invest. Uh, but f uh, first and foremost as well, we really want to be, let's say, a first mover in this space. So we are currently, uh, for instance, looking uh, to invest and we are investing in a project uh, in Saudi Arabia to produce green hydrogen. And that is uh, near the city of Neom and there is plenty of uh, solar and wind available, which we then can use to generate renewable power. And with that renewable power, we can actually turn water into hydrogen. So we really get uh, green hydrogen, which we then can uh, export to, for instance, uh, Europe. Uh, and the capacity of that plant is going to be 650 tons per day of green hydrogen. And to put it into perspective, that is all close to, let's say, 2.5 million liters of diesel on a daily basis. And Part of that hydrogen will be coming to, to Europe. Uh, the plant will be operational in 2026. So that is something that, that we as a company are doing. And it also helps Europe to uh, decarbonize industry, but also heavy duty transport. And especially looking, let's say, at the uh, situation that we're currently in with the war in Ukraine, we see that Europe has set very ambitious goals uh, to actually uh, import uh, something like 10 million tons of hydrogen per year uh, by 2030. And projects like NEOM actually then contribute to reaching that, that ambition and uh, helps to, to get the uh, energy security in Europe established. And that is something really, I think, that we need, which is what is the current situation showing. Exactly. You were talking about investments. I think we have another expert on the table who is quite, uh, quite uh, accustomed to uh, talking about investments in the new hydrogen ecosystem. Chris, so your product manager at Hytrux, could you very briefly sum up what Hytrux is about? Well, uh, Hytrux is a project, and, and I can say in the meantime that has grown to 70 partners. We have uh, 43 transport companies that are in the partnership. We have uh, six uh, hydrogen refueling station operators that want to deploy stations. And we have uh, three truck OEMs, manufacturers in the project. And by 25, we want to put 1,000 trucks uh, with hydrogen in the heart, the logistic heart of Europe on the road. And uh, more even uh, since two months, we can only say, also say that we will not only deploy that network in the Triangle, Rotterdam, Antwerp and Duisburg, eh, the Ruhr area in Germany, but that the network will also cover the whole of France and Luxembourg.
No, that's fascinating indeed. But as you're meeting all the OEMs, the customers, the end users, the energy providers, uh, the station companies, wh what is necessary, as far as you're concerned, to make um, hydrogen a possible solution for heavy duty tra truck fleets? Yeah. So the basic issue or challenge here is when you have to introduce a new technology in a complete value chain, is to align that value chain in time, in volume, in, in money, yeah? so that every player in the value chain uh, on the right time, at the right place, at the right moment, uh, can start with this new technology. So first of all, we need, of course, green hydrogen, and there the good news is that we have pioneers like Air Products doing massive investments of tens of billions of dollars uh, in uh, production of green hydrogen. That's the first step. The second step is you need the refueling stations yeah, and a dense network so that it's operationally viable for a transport operator. Third, you need the trucks. And also there, every week uh, when I wake up and I see a new uh, press release of a CEO of a truck OEM manufacturer saying, yes, we are also going to invest in hydrogen. It's good news. Uh, but last but not least, we need the transport operators. Eh? The transport operators like uh, Van Moer eh, that want to really invest early in this new technology, take the, the risk, but also go the learning curve and uh, make sure that they are ready when the technology is re really breaking through in mass volume. Eh? So second half of this uh, decade. Yeah. Bert or Frederick, it's true that launching a new technology might become a kind of chicken and egg problem. Uh, of course, you will never buy any new technology if not sure where you can refuel because your trucks have to drive every day. They can't stop. Uptime is of primal importance to, to, to you. Is the, the, the Hytrex project the kind of project that can break that, that dilemma and break the chicken and egg problem? Bert? Yes, in, in a few years it will be, yeah. It, it will take some time, but it will come, uh, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. oh, I, have the, I have the same opinion in detail. Okay, um, Hytrex is consolidating all parties, um, and I think that is the way forward. Um, but indeed, the, the key of our operations uh, as a logistics service provider and transport company is the daily operations of our truck. So at this moment, we are strong believers in uh, dual fuel um, technology indeed, but in the future, um, and in the near future indeed, yeah, monofuel and uh, fuel cell uh, will be, yeah. I, I, I agree that I was a bit uh, doubting about the dual fuel uh, solution because it's not 100% a, a hydrogen solution, eh? it's still, f but uh, as an intermediate solution, it could be a very good solution uh, because it's a technology we already know. Uh, it's not new. It's, it's, it's just like a, a truck uh, we had uh, 15 years ago, the first truck that was a dual fuel with, uh, with gas. gas yeah? And uh, we, we drove with it for five years and it went really well. But it was not a solution for sustainability. Yeah? Um, but the, I think the dual fuel technology could come a little bit earlier yeah. than, than the, the fuel cell technology, which is completely new. Uh, so the, so um, I think we should uh, look into, into that direction too as, a, as one of the solutions. Yeah? Yeah. And, and don't forget the fact that hydrogen can also be used as a fuel in the combustion engines as well. Yes. Um, yes some manufacturers are investigating that very... There's the fuel cell technology and there's uh, the combustion engine technology. Um, the consumption wise, the fuel cell technology is, is much better. And, and, and if we, 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 are, we are, yes, I'm sorry. We are, of course, uh, um, calculating also the cost, eh? the cost of the investments. And, 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 and it looks like the fuel cell is, will be cheaper to use yeah, than, than, uh, uh, because the, the cost of energy should be uh, lower. Yeah. Okay. During debates, I like to challenge my panel members, but this time I let uh, Frank do the talking. Frank, how, how would you challenge Bert and, uh, and Frederick? 
Well, what, let's say what, what I would be curious uh, to, to hear from uh, Frederick and from Bert is basically, let's say, how uh, you know, would you kind of convert your extensive fleets to, to a zero emission or to, to lower CO2 emissions and what role does hydrogen play in that? That would be maybe one question. And the other question is, how do your customers actually respond to when you go to, a, let's say, a hydrogen uh, uh, solution? Are they, for instance, prepared also to pay a little bit more for a zero emission distribution solution? Okay, who starts? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, to start with, uh, the cost of transport is already increasing. Yeah? Uh, it doesn't, uh, it's, it, hydrogen is not yet a part of that. Um, I think the biggest issue in transport will be the lack of drivers, um, but that's another story. So. Um, there is most of our customers are concerned with sustainability. They are concerned. Uh, the financial partners, the banks are concerned with sustainability. If we make an investment in something that's not sustainable, the banks will not in, uh, give us the money to do that or they will charge us uh, a higher interest rate. That will come. So are customers prepared to pay for it? Yes. But is it an easy thing? No. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and I have to ch challenge air products yeah, that there's still, it's a new technology, it's not new, hydrogen is not new. Yeah. But the scale we will, we will want to use hydrogen is so massive that there's still a lot of economies to gain. So I challenge air products also to, to develop this and to come to a, a level of cost that is, that is usable, yeah, that we can work with. You said it was not easy, but oh, if it was easy, everyone would do it. Of course, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Frederik, what, what's your answer to Frank's questions? Yeah, in general, um, okay, today Vamoor Logistics is operating a fleet of more than 500 trucks uh, within the group, uh, doing national transport, international transport. And we are present in a lot of markets, like the construction market, tank containers uh, business, uh, the distribution market. So in general, all kind of markets within the group. Uh, how do we want to convert? Let's su suggest, uh, for example, our exceptional fleet, who is carrying more than 100 tons of material uh, on their trailers. Okay, that will, that will still be diesel, for sure. But, okay, the distribution fleet, we are looking into hydrogen solutions, looking into electrical solutions for the city distribution, uh, for example. But okay, on uh, heavy transport, national and international, let's assume indeed uh, dual fuel or indeed the uh, monofuel or dual uh, fuel cell uh, trucks will be the future. And how are we converting? Okay, we are not only using diesel trucks, we are also using the hydrogen, the dual fuel truck. Uh, we ordered more than 20 trucks, which will be delivered by the end of this year, running on dual fuel. And also with uh, high trucks, uh, we came to an agreement uh, with a letter of intent of uh, dual uh, um, fuel cell trucks. But we're also investigating LNG still, so there is no, like uh, Claude uh, told in the beginning, there is no one solution in place right now, um, but we are converting and specifically for every market that you operate uh, within our logistical group. Yeah, Qu quite obviously, and we've touched upon it quite a few times since the start of the conversation. Well, the financial aspect is also key Absolutely. to make it happen. Uh, Chris, within uh, the Hydrox project, you've done an interesting study on uh, TCO of hydrogen trucks, and apparently the results are quite positive. Well, uh, they are positive under uh, conditions. Um, of if you look at uh, the, the cost evolution, the TCO of, of the diesel truck is going up. Yeah? Drivers are scarce so they become more expensive. Trucks are scarce, they become more expensive. Uh, and also the energy, yeah, there is a lot more demand than, than offer on the market and the cost of the, of the diesel energy goes up. And so, uh, and on top of that now, uh, regulation is pushing further the cost up of diesel. Eh? I think yesterday the European Parliament voted to add transport to uh, the ETS. The ETS. Yeah. Uh, that means that uh, if you are uh, selling fuel for trucks, you need to decrease your CO2 content and that means that uh, you have a lot of more costs than, than before. So a lot of regulation, scarcity uh, of all kinds are driving the TCO cost of diesel up. On the other hand, you have the curve of uh, battery and, and hydrogen trucks. They're hugely expensive 
today compared to uh, diesel trucks. Eh? But there we see massive investments of, on one hand, the producers of green hydrogen, uh, massive investments also of, of truck manufacturers that are really engaging into um, uh, automating the production cost and so bringing down the production cost of the trucks. Uh, you see the component builders of the expensive components are also building factories to bring down the cost of the components. And so we foresee that the, the cost of the, of the hydrogen trucks will come down. Yeah? But if we don't do anything, we uh, uh, assess that by the end only of this decade, there will be a break-even point so that for a transport operator, he can afford to switch from carbon technology to zero emission. That's technology. what we call TCO parity. The TCO that parity point TCO would be parity, end of indeed. the decade. So the point where it's affordable for a transport company on large scale to go zero emission. Now we at Hartrux, we said, okay, we, we cannot wait for 2030. Eh? If you look at the objectives of Europe to decrease the CO2 emissions, and we would wait until 2030, that's a disaster. So we need to close the gap between the cost of the uh, green technology, if I can call it like that, and the cost of the carbon technology. And so there in this project, we have uh, on one hand the, the private partners investing uh, in this uh, project by buying trucks, by building trucks, by building uh, refueling stations for hydrogen. But on the other hand, we also have the, the, the public authorities as a partner uh, to provide us the necessary subsidies to help to close the gap and also to make life easier on us as a new technology to de deploy and uh, develop. Berten and uh, Frederik, um, quite recently the Flemish government, you're both Flemish companies, the Flemish government put a new uh, subsidy system into place for uh, helping transport company to invest in zero emission trucks. Is that enough? Is that good? Is, it, is that only a good start? What, what's, what's your take on that? Uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's important. Uh, in this stage, it's important. Uh, we are working on on buying uh, 30 uh, hydrogen trucks now, and and it really helps. Yeah, um, yeah I th I think without uh, government aid at this stage, it will be impossible. Yeah. Uh, does that help you to close the gap, as Chris said? It, it doesn't help to close the gap, but it helps you to do what you want to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, we want to start with it. We want to learn from it. We want to be a little bit uh, leading, leading it. And um, without uh, 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 governmental support, you cannot do that. Uh, uh, maybe air products can, but even <laughs> there, uh, you have a strong balance sheet. You, told, you mentioned <laughs> no, but uh, yeah. Um, but but in this early stage, we need uh, some support. Uh, at a certain time, it needs to become a uh, yeah, more uh, common, common thing. Yeah. It's, it remains, in fact, to be seen when the inclusion of road transport in the ETS system will have a, an impact on the cost of diesel sold at a pump that might accelerate the, the TCO parity moment that you've talked about as well. Uh, Frank, I'd like to come back to you. Let's look into the future. We're here in uh, 2022, end of June. If we meet here in five years' time, and in your ideal uh, product world, what will you have achieved to accompany our readers, our visitors, the Passion for Trucks visitors, to, to, to uh, accompany them towards zero emission transport? It sounds almost like a job interview question, Claude, but indeed, I, I think we have to look ahead and to see, you know, what do we want to achieve? And as our products, uh, let's say, I, I see within five years, let's say that, that we are working with partners to actually get fueling stations uh, uh, implemented, uh, being used. Uh, our products would be uh, building those fueling stations, uh, operating them, and also owning them. Uh, we would be working with high trucks uh, to get the initial fueling station network actually established. Um, but we also need trucks and we need users for those trucks. Uh, so uh, what, I'm, what I'm envisaging in five years time is that there will be also be more trucks coming on the market, more OEMs that will offer those trucks uh, because that is needed also to drive the cost down. So uh, I, th I see, let's say that hydrogen in five years time will actually be becoming, let's say hopefully 
getting to the stage where it can become mainstream, so that we, what Chris was saying, getting to the 230 mark where the TCO could be uh, uh, on par with, uh, with diesel. And of course, I mean, one of the other things is in five years' time, then, uh, for instance, our NEON project will actually produce 650 tons of green hydrogen per day, which we will then be making available uh, for people then to, uh, to use. But, and, and I think that it was very clear what was said here is that we as our products cannot do that alone. We really need, let's say, uh, the support, uh, partnerships like with Hytrox. Uh, partnerships like with the logistics companies to really uh, achieve what, 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 we, what we envisage in five years' time. And uh, in that respect, and it was mentioned, we also need support from, from uh, let's say, the public government because we need a, a favorable uh, policy framework, a stable policy framework, and the right incentives to actually bridge the initial gap so that we can uh, really accelerate the deployment of uh, hydrogen fueling infrastructure which is a prerequisite to actually get those trucks uh, on the road. And, you know, uh, as far as we're concerned, we also see, and I agree with Bert uh, to that one, that, for instance, uh, dual fuel uh, trucks that can run on both diesel and on hydrogen are really a very good bridging technology also to get the hydrogen infrastructure in place. So that is something that, uh, yeah, we, we really, let's say, we're kind of technology agnostic in that respect. Um, but again, we cannot do it alone. And uh, if we want to actually achieve what I just described in uh, five years' time, we have to start now, today, because it takes time to actually set that up. And, uh, you know, we're happy to uh, entertain people and uh, invite them to our stand and have further discussions on uh, how we can achieve that uh, five-year vision. Is that an invitation for now? That's an invitation for now, indeed, yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, so the audience, well, the people who are watching us on the web can't Did come. They can't join, but... Yeah. The other, well, are welcome on the air product stand in a few minutes' time. Bert, Frédéric, Frank and Chris, thank you very much for sharing your expertise on hydrogen. Thank you, and I think thank it's you, just the start of a very long story. Yes. Absolutely. Have Absolutely. a good day. Thank you. Thank you.